Blog Talk Radio. Today is Sunday, November 12th, 2017, and school is officially in. Cue the theme music. <laughs> Yo, where the theme music is? <laughs> It's either right on time or it's too late. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with yep. this right now. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> yo, it's always live. Live is always live. It's always live on the school's end podcast. It ain't one thing as another. It ain't one thing as another. Hey. Um, so welcome to the school's end podcast. Um, as always, I am Mitch and I am joined today. Aaron? Aaron? Yes. What's up? All right. And very much kicking. And you out? What up? What up? Today, we are discussing the age-old hip-hop question. Is hip-hop dead? Is hip-hop dead? I don't know. Let's see. So, before we start that, um, let's just um, do a bit of housekeeping. If you all like us, if you like what we do, if you're listening to us, if you're out there and you're going, I dig this Schools in podcast. Please, please. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. Just type in Schools In and we will pop up. If you like us, you love our show, subscribe to us on um, on Google Play. Subscribe to us um, on SoundCloud, on iTunes, on CastBox. Um, YouTube is coming soon. But yeah, we everywhere. We everywhere. We out here. We out here. We out here. We're taking over the streets. <laughs> so just, just type in schools in. Uh, type in schools in. And we, we shall spelled pop it correctly. Up. We spelled it correctly. We did spell no it. Page, and no even, if you, like, <laughs> even if you hate us, even if you tune in every week and say, I hate them sons of bitches. Okay? Feel free to hate subscribe to us. <laughs> just do whatever you feel, but just subscribe. Follow. So, yep. gentlemen, we've been Here talking we about hip hop. We've been talking about hip hop and its origins, and um, how the tides have turned, and some of the influences that have come into the genre, and things that it's done to the genre. And we always talk about whether or not hip hop um, is alive and thriving. Or if it's on its last day, legs and needs a respirator. Well, and remember, feel, we want to keep feel, this conversation in the, in, in the frame of art versus commerce. Because that's always what exactly. we're talking about. All right, you should clarify, are we talking about the music or are we talking about the culture? Um, In general, when people propose that question, they're talking about rap music. But because mm-hmm. this show was about hip hop, period, we're just gonna we're just gonna throw it out there for the whole culture, the entire culture, all the elements, including knowledge. I would definitely say knowledge is dead. I ain't even going there. Knowledge is definitely, <laughs> definitely, unequivocally, indubitably is <laughs> <laughs> dead. Is done. Cause folks don't know shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't know a damn thing. So what we, so what, so what we talking about? What we talking about right now? Like uh, the beginnings of everything? Because I feel like we had this conversation before. Well, we Why? had a whole series. We just had a whole series on the elements of hip hop. Yeah. But I mean that's part of the reason why back. we're here, cause, cause I mean, cause we're trying to rep the knowledge. We gotta bring the knowledge back so we can bring everything else back. 
I feel like knowledge is a key element. It absolutely is. But wait a minute. You know what? I ain't even gonna get into it. Knowledge is the key element, and you feel like it's dead, right? <laughs> Unfortunately. Yo, Aaron just dead at y'all argument right there. <laughs> nope. So, nope. so what's good? Nope. Uh, you gotta give the people some context. You gotta give them some context. <laughs> All right. Well, because, knowledge, said- knowledge is a hidden. Knowledge has been a hidden element the whole time. Yeah. Man, I it's feel one like of those you just ran around. Things. It's un- I feel like it's you just ran around your point. I ain't running around the point. I'm just saying, like, knowledge has always been a hidden element. So if it's dead, people are not going to automatically notice. Okay. So your stance on, you know, the question, is hip-hop dead? What's your stance on it? My stance is no, it ain't dead. It's on life support. <laughs> All right. So where the receipts for this for this argument <laughs> like, look around, look around, look around, look around. Like for one, my main defense for why hip hop is not dead is us. Okay. Like especially me and you. Like me and you, we came up in the town when it was supposed to be getting buried. It was like mm. the rap. It was the rap for hip hop. Yeah. But we still last. We still last onto the elements. We still grabbed onto the culture as it was originally introduced. I yes, can, and, who was, and wait a minute, and and who was instrumental to that, Aunt? I mean, you help, you help. We was already on our journey. Whatever. <laughs> we was already whatever. on our journey. You help, you help. Yeah, you help. Yeah. I help. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> well, I'm mean, trying to find a people... podcast in my room. No doubt. <laughs> About people, hip hop. But, but people came along behind us too and did the same thing. There's people from. The current generation that last on to the elements too. Yeah. So it ain't dead. Not not as many though. Not as many. It ain't dead. It's just not as prevalent. Okay. So let's bring some some clarification to the the discussion we're having in like the context of art versus commerce. So let's separate those two things out so people understand because that's the reason why Nas caught so much fucking flack when he made that the uh, Hip Hop Is Dead album in the first place and why right. everybody jumped on him like. But his, his again, most well marketed project, his most well marketed project. Well, and here's the thing that and I, I was telling y'all that had been an argument that everybody was having a zillion years ago. It wasn't like this question started even ten years ago, like. In the 90s, right. like right after Biggie and Pac died, because you know, I'll tell y'all, to me, that's when the shit was over. It was a wrap. In my mind, that shit died with them. In the mm. way that we we knew it and understood it. In the way that, like, you feel it and not just hear it. Right. The way it gets into your soul yeah. because you have one. Because you have a soul. What happened? I said for me, big they weren't all the other elements. Um okay, okay, elaborate. More it was more interested in more in the of the culture they were you know, MC or B boy, I'm sorry, or B boy or or DJing or, or uh, you know, knowledge. Well, I mean, okay, I would definitely put, I would, I would definitely say that Tupac kicked knowledge though. Yeah, Tupac kicked knowledge from time to time, but Tupac also spit. He did, but not, but that wasn't the crux of his whole career and he just started doing that when he signed the death row prior to that he wasn't doing that at all who Tupac I mean Tupac went to a performance but Tupac was a, I mean he started out as a roadie when he first started he was a dancer he, 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 he,
I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I can't hear you. You don't talk about it. Yeah, and you're breaking up really bad. talk about Hello. Hello. Yeah, I can't yeah. hear him. I think he, I think he out. <laughs> no, you're still there, right? Still here. Hello. Okay, hold on. All right, you there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, so, I'm sorry, you said, what about Tupac? All this background. Like, that never comes up. Aunt, you're breaking up. We can't hear you. Oh, man. Wrong. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I was saying. Background dance. Yeah, still can't hear you. Aaron, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Uh, yeah. I hear you, and but I don't know what's going on. Like whenever you said, oh, he kicked, he kicked out. Okay. Yeah, he dropped out on us. I think he hung up to try to call back in again. But yeah, I don't think, I think that whole generation, I think my generation was a lot closer to the elements than that next generation that came through. Right. That's my argument on why um, I feel like it's dead. You know what I'm saying? Uh, why? But that's one of, that's one of my arguments. Because, you know, um, like you said, like, of course, your generation was closer to, you know, what it was all about. Our generation, we caught like the, the ass into everything, you know what I'm saying? So it's heads or tails, depend, it's heads or tails depending on who you're talking to that's, um, you know, uh, from that particular time. Right. And um, it's, it's something that's the everything that's a lot of what's wrong with it is being passed down to the next generation but that's how it happens yeah like i think because, that's i mean the, the 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 further and further you get away from the the original thing the more that shit is just grayed and frayed and fuzzy and doesn't resemble the thing right and so unless you cut everything and then get back to the thing the original yeah. thing. Like there's there's probably no way that you're gonna get, you know, um um innovation. Can you still hear us, Aunt? Aren't you here? Yeah, I can hear y'all. I can hear y'all. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, see, part of part of the reason why dancers don't come up we talk about Tupac is because People don't fucking know their history. That's the knowledge component. They don't know shit. Right. But that's that's the point I I was trying to make when I said, you know, every every generation is getting further and further from it. Just like, you know, just like past um um art forms, black art forms, you know? Well, you know what, Aaron and and I'm gonna say this. When people love jazz, even though jazz is not a commercially viable art form like it used to be. They know the origins of jazz. They True. go back and learn what jazz was about from its inception. Well, so I, old school I, artists, I, and you know. Well, I think I think that's because, um, you know, of the the time, the era too, because you couldn't just um, be a musician and say, "Oh, well, I, I know jazz music." back then you know like you couldn't just like oh well I'm a jazz music, musician because of this that and the third you know you had to have somebody to you know help you know the origin of things well that would be somebody... respecting your elders which this generation does not do but it seemed to me like like 
whatever is translated into what hip hop is supposed to be is reflected automatically off of what urban culture is doing. Well, hip hop has always done that just because it's in the fucking toilet right now. Everything is <laughs> shitty. Because, I mean, so <laughs> it, does that necessarily mean that it's dead though? Just because it's in the toilet? Well, the reason why I'm saying it's dead is not because um, it's not around. The reason why, and that's why I said art versus commerce. That's the argument I'm really having. So whenever we're talking about this topic in my head, that's the there's it's not about art anymore. It's all about commerce. Things are just being done to chase dollars. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you're 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 replicating the set. There's no innovation. In order for something to to live and thrive, there has to be new things growing and blooming. Creating horrible garbage over and over again so you can turn a buck Gosh. like we we talked we talked um before and um a few times about like how you know uh, uh hip-hop is directly derived from funk music and so yeah and um you know watching um documentaries on like you know like the death of funk and you know the death of you know whatever era of music i was um I noticed that back then there wasn't such an emphasis on the money aspect. Like when you when you see interviews with like uh, funk musicians and you know R and B musicians back then, it was more so um, they tell you about like techniques that they picked up because they was inspired by whatever other artists to do something right. different with it and all this other stuff. Like they they go into that that type of thing but when you talk to a lot of rap artists especially like you know ones that we came me and Anthony came up on like late 90s early 2000s and all that their arguments for why it's it's still going or you know uh what was going on back then with the music is always based around you know the selling the records and you know Mm -hmm. uh, how we went we went double platinum with this and all that kind of thing yeah and so y'all know that's 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 the that's the reason why I never use record sales as a lead in to any argument about any artist and why that I used to get mad. Me. I used to get mad about that. I'm like I mean, if Jay Z put out a blank but... if Jay Z put out a blank C <laughs> D two million of you motherfuckers is gonna go out right now and buy it. That and don't mean the shit is good. Especially in y'all exactly. time period. Like, like when I started exactly. thinking y'all, Jay-Z was coming, like, off just the horns of, you know, that, that uh, a big, long line of, of crazy success. And he was, you know, telling everybody, you know, the, the first in a series of retirement lives. And so everybody thought, oh, it's going to be the last album ever. Jay-Z could have sold Ice Cube in fucking Nova Scotia mm-hmm. at that time. Could have sold socks to a slug. Yeah, how about that? Could have sold books to a blind man. It, look, <laughs> and, and not even in Braille. Like, it wouldn't even matter. Damn. It wouldn't even matter. Fly in a piece but, of paper bearing his name. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> see, that's because... That was, see, but, that was but that's my great he told you he's like I could put out anything and y'all motherfuckers will buy it. Watch this. Why does that sound just like Orange Hitler? That's um, what he did. Exactly what Jay did. But um, what were we not? What we not explaining to like you know um the younger generation and the people that's you know what I'm saying supposedly supposed to be carrying it on is that it's not something you just you just do because okay i can get some bread off of this you know like this is like hip-hop is something that was like if you watch all those documentaries that we talked about star wars and wild style and all that yep and hip-hop evolution right it was more of a recreational thing like you could go to the park you know what i'm saying and like just based on the energy that you and your homie started a cypher might start up you know 
you could go, you know what I'm saying? You might see people like bring the music out and you know, next thing you know, you got your B-boys and all that type of stuff. Well, yep, right in the parking lot. Exactly, you know, and it was just, it, it was that type of energy um, for all of it. Um, and but, it was, but that, but that was because it was for the love at that time. It was for the love, but... Right, and, and that's why... But, that's why to me that's why to me it makes sense when i hear like i talk to people like you know that's like um your age some of them even older yeah and um they're they they always have an energy like when i'm talking about hip-hop and you know when i'm talking about those kind of things like they always got this energy like you know man i used to do that you know what i'm saying like they used to be what we did all the time, you know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. might have somebody, you might have somebody that's in their 40s and their 50s that just spit a verse for you. And the way we perceive hip hop is like, you too, you too old to be doing that. That's not the thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and not realizing that you're talking to somebody that really was in it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. that's, that's where yep. we at right now. And well, it, it, it's funny you were talking about the funk musicians and and even at the height of funk and jazz like when those things reached their zenith and people were making money at it like they were making pretty good money at it right you still didn't hear any of them talk about selling records yeah, ever exactly. they were always focused on the fact that this but see speaking of jay-z <laughs> As we always point to him as one of our as one of our culprits, but as we said before, the turnover came when when the gangsterism, the gangster posturing, and the drugs, like the drug selling, the drug selling brought in the commercialism. And that mm-hmm. was the turnover. That's when things, and and that's why I said when Biggie and Pop died, the energy, it was almost like the energy of the original that was still existing there, and that still could move and breathe and live with certain people, you know. Because I mean, everybody wasn't Biggie and Tupac. People who were making, you know really good hip hop like the far side and the hieroglyphics. Right. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and um, Lords of the Underground, they were still out there making music. You know, J. Root of Damager. It wasn't like and they were records people were buying. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's like it you know, it it hadn't gotten to the point where they weren't still able to sell records. The the uh, landscape hadn't changed that much at that you know, to the point where you couldn't they couldn't be viable. Right. When when you had like the chronic come through, you know, as we said before, and that like that was a one hundred percent a game changer. Because as soon as when you start making that kind of money and that kind of noise and when you construct a death row. Right. That it, you know, and then on the counterpoint, Puffy comes out in New York to you know to counteract that, and you have Puffy constructing a a bad boy, where you have that much money being able to be generated by hip hop. Then now you have the attention of people who are not of the culture or for it. Hmm. True. And once they infiltrate. They're now going to hype up the most sensationalized aspects of what you do so they can sell. They and they don't give a shit about how that's going to affect you, how that's going to affect your community, how it's going to affect the music, how it's going to... Ca- Once that shit is dead, they hop off and go on to the next fucking thing. They don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they put out an apology statement. What happened? I said after they put out an apology statement. <laughs> and, and if that, and they, they're not going to apologize. You know, the suits that make the money off of our blood, sweat, and tears, they're not going to apologize for that shit. I mean, to their regular fans, like Hannah Montana, for example. Oh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> they apologize for coming over to hip-hop. 
Well, we talking about we not talking about the cultural appropriating people. We talking about the uh, the the ones that want to use us use us for uh, commerce. Same yeah. People. And it's funny that um, Ms. Mitchell brought up uh, uh, Biggie and Tupac being uh, the death of it because I was talking to my brother yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Um, just asking him, just asking him, like, you know, when he feel like it died. Mind you, my brother is probably, like, three years younger than me, I think. So, um, he was saying that uh, we lost the energy, um, and you and, and he said like you you can see like that we lost the energy that um hip hop was when uh Tupac and Biggie died because when they when they died people showed up for them people came out for them and you know like this is early in their careers yeah like they died early in their careers people forget they shut the fucking city down when when they exact exactly and um the point my brother was trying to make on like why we can clearly see that things are dead or dying is that I don't feel like us as fans have that same type of energy to 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 feel that way about you know an artist of today. What it depend on well, who it was? Look at Chinks. Chinks just died. Look at who? Chinks. I don't know who that is. See exactly, exactly. And I mean he even <laughs> gone. Like he doesn't like whoever that is does not have to shutting the whole city down power. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It would depend on who died though. But you know what? It's funny we should say it, it depends on who who died because this, as I was saying, this 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 question is an age old question because depending on who you ask, the question answer is different. So if if you're talking to somebody 10 years older than me, 15 years older than me, hip hop in their mind could have died as soon as Sylvia Robinson started Sugar Hill. Yeah, true that. Yeah. Because they remember hip hop being something that was a street culture. It was done in the street. It was done in the parks. It was done wherever you could do it. Mm-hmm. You know, like you lived and died for it to, to, to grab and to tag. You know, and you did, you know, your your b boy, and you did it like to them that original part of the culture that was dead when it got commercialized in the like early to mid eighties. So to them, that's when hip hop died. To my generation, took up the torch and carried it until the late. Um, to the early mid nineties, and then you know when Biggie and Tupac died, that's when it died for us. Cause then you know when when you know rap game crack game energy took over. Like I'm a I'm a, I'm gonna come out here and I'm a I'm gonna turn this into my new hustle. Right, right. And I would and I would argue that if uh, Tupac and Biggie came up and um. In, in the era 10 years before that um, that would have never happened mm-hmm. I, you know what you're probably right <laughs> cause I mean cause, cause there would have been a fucking stop the violence summit and KRS1 would have been pulling everybody aside like no 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, it would have been a lot it would have been a lot different Um, mm-hmm. it would have been a lot different then the energy was different it, you know we didn't Again, we didn't prom- we didn't even promote the selling of drugs at that time. People were doing right. it. That's the like to me that's a big difference in 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 the value system too. Is that like and I think that's part of what helped to kill it is that our value systems changed and that shit bled into our music. Exactly, but see that's why I make the point that our energy isn't there anymore. Like. We aren't, we don't even, like, the artists that we do talk about that, you know, still carrying the torch, so to speak, like, we don't even show up for them. We don't, we don't show up for them. And what I mean by that is, um, that, um, I think I, I think I brought it up before about Joe Button. He was talking to, um, uh, academics and, um, they were talking about, uh, the pimple. playlist academics. Yeah, playlist no. whack. Playlist shepherdemics. 
So yeah, Joe was um having a conversation with him about uh to Pepper Butterfly. This is like before it came out or whatever, and mm-hmm. he was just like, oh well, I, I I'm not I'm not sure what he gonna do with this one. I'm not sure how um DM is gonna sound or whatever. And he was just like real skeptical about it. And Joe was like, see, this is what I don't understand about y'all young niggas because we never acted like that when 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 Rock Kim dropped the album. We, we we were excited about it. It wasn't you know because he already gave us something that that let us know that he wasn't going to give us nothing less. We didn't doubt him every album out. Exactly that that type of thing. And um, we trusted not just it. trusted it. Not yeah, right. And not just the fact that a lot of us do that nowadays. Like uh, we also got the fact that like a lot of these messages on because I went back like I I did a, I did a lot of backtracking for this episode. <laughs> And um, I was listening to um to Pepper Butterfly, Good Kid, Mad City, and then Dam. And me and you talked about this, Miss Mitchell, like how the energy on Dam is like kind of you know, is is that monotone dead behind the eyes feeling like that we talked about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's that some of that. It's some of that. <laughs> right. It's some of that going on on Dam. And I thought about it when I went back and listened to those records. I said, I said he was he didn't get the energy he wanted reciprocated like when he put out that music on uh a good kid mad city and some pepper butterfly mm-hmm. like it was mm-hmm. it, he was he was telling us stuff on there you know what i'm saying that he wanted us to respond to not just listen right. to it and say and say oh man hip-hop is still alive and go go back to looking at your phone and looking at some like shit. he wanted the people to to start a movement and to start a exactly change. exactly that's what yeah. that music sounds like you know, but that energy wasn't reciprocated, and I feel like the same thing was done with J. Cole, and that's why his album sound the way it do this last one. I think, actually, I actually um, heard someone um, talking one day, and I can't remember, I think I was on the train maybe, and they were talking about the difference between Good Kids um, and and Snip a Butterfly, and we're just saying how. Like so, one kid was like, you know, Butterfly was like, like that was his his definitive, you know, at that point, definitive right. album basically. Uh, and of course, you know, declaring his definitive like what three albums in. So he's like, uh, but you know, he was saying that that genre was amazing, and you know, why? And the other dude was like, oh, he said that, oh, that shit was too throwback. It was too old school. It was boring. And I was just sitting there, like, as a big fan of Butterfly. Just thinking to myself, really? He takes it back to a place of authenticity. Right. Of connecting to something and not just... Like, right. when I had played that that album, I remember when... Because like, somebody told me about it. They were like, yo, I know you like, you know, Good Kid. Like this shit is crazy. It's like bananas. And people will tell you what tracks to put on first. I was like, I'm just gonna play the, you know, the whole thing, let it go through. Yo, right, right. By the time it got to all right, I was like, I had to pull the car over. (laughs) (laughs) Because, well, because that, because that feeling. See, with me, I'm not expecting to feel that way about hip hop anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, see, that's kind of where my argument comes in at. I so you think enough... that as long as anybody can make you feel that way, can spark no, that no. in you, that hip hop is just not. Maybe, good. maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe I'll tuck that I'll I'll, I'll file that away for right now. But my yeah, because I was thing, just okay. about to give you an example though. My whole my whole thing is like by the time me and Aaron came in the game and we started buying our own music and started downloading our own stuff, we were already on the mold. Like we not gonna listen to what everybody else is listening to. We don't care what everybody else is listening to. Listening to. We gonna follow these particular artists that we found that we like, and we gonna dig everybody that mess with them. We gonna branch out from there. Right. Like I never been a big radio head. I never listened to the radio much. I never listened to the mainstream or whatnot. I always yeah. dug, and I always dug for what I wanted to listen to. 
See, and see what Ann is saying right now is that hip hop is not dead. Hip hop has has um become politicized and radicalized, and it has gone underground like Demolition Man. Uh huh. Uh huh. So by time, by time, hip hop is underground eating rat burgers. <laughs> rat burgers. He, he kept eating that joint too. So he was a good rat. <laughs> hey yo. <laughs> But Hell yeah. I, I, I can tell you the first time when I when when Good Kid Mad City came out, I was at work. I still worked at Mercy back then, and I was still like doing janitorial work. So I cleaned the shit out that building that night listening to that album from start <laughs> to finish, from from track one to track what is it, thirteen, fourteen? Yeah. From beginning to end, I cleaned the shit out that building listening to that album. I didn't skip nothing. I didn't need no reference. Nobody told me about it. Nobody put me on to it. I was waiting for it already because digging for it organically led me or put me on the Kendrick Lamar. It led me down that rabbit hole. You know, like to this day and forever, like there are certain songs that I will put on when I just feel like I'm in a shithole. When I put on All Right and Part of the reason why All Right is is a representation of four. Um, excuse me, excuse me. Ooh, I'm getting ready to sneak. Oh no, there. Okay, I didn't do it. The reason why it is a full, um, it's a full um rep of hip hop is because the sentiment in that song mm-hmm. is is authentic. To the origins of hip hop, shit ain't all right. Shit is actually fucking horrible. Yep. <laughs> I got guns at my face. Cops trying to kill me. Motherfuckers around the corner trying to kill me. Shit ain't all right. Like in the early days of the fucking Bronx, shit ain't all right. There's right. Gangs out here. I'm living That's in poverty. Been. But. That's always been a but but as long as God has got me, and as long as I have this thing I can attach to, as long as I got this mic and I can sit, as long as I can write, as long as I can think, as long as I got blood thrown through my veins and I can do this thing that I love, it's going to be all right. All right. That's, now, that's a whole nother episode. That's a whole nother I'm episode. A, I'm going to ask you all two <laughs> questions. I'm going to ask you all two questions right now. Okay. The first, the first one is, who produced All Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Miss Mitchell true. already know where I'm going, right? Right, I do. And in the in my second my second question is this one to Anthony: How how have we seen that energy that Kendrick gave us reciprocated? Yeah, well, he's definitely. He's he's well received. Yeah, he's well received. But I mean. I can only look around at what I see in terms of reciprocation. And yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. Like as a, as a society, like nothing. I don't see like the energy. Well, hold on. I was just getting to that. I was just getting to that. Like like we were talking about in the chat the other day. Like Rhapsody said, the most well recognized rappers in the game right now are all spitters. Like all legit heavyweight certified MC spitters. Right, and that's saying that's saying something. You know okay. Saying? Like that's, that's, okay. You know that's what? A, I, will, I won't disagree with that. I will. I will. I'll co-sign that. That's true. That's, okay. That's so, so can I get can I get to another part of it though? But like, let me throw in there too. Let me throw in there too. Let me throw in there too. My little brother just turned. He just turned sixteen. He told me okay. a couple years ago. He told me a couple years ago Kendrick Lamar was his favorite rapper. Like I was playing. Nine, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was, yeah. yeah, right. I was I was playing nine double oh five nine in my mouth and he recognized it and he was like that's that work. Like, yeah, that's real. What hard. are the real choices though? Yeah, I'm, that, he got a lot to choose from. He got a lot to choose from. Does he really? Does he? he? He could discern. He could discern from what's real and what's not. Is what what I'm getting at. And and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying for someone so who can do that, there ain't that many choices. <laughs> we got a, we got a lot to choose from. 
We really do. It's a lot of okay. a lot of excellent, especially this year. For example, 2018 has been a spectacular mm-hmm. year for hip hop music. 2017 wasn't bad. 2016, 2016 wasn't like the last few years. Like we had a lot of good rap music coming out. Like breaking through some of this, this you know nonsense. Even if it was the same thing, but like Rhapsody, like Rhapsody been putting out drums every year. Logic been putting out drums every year. J. Cole, like, still, eight, two, three years. We still, we still, number one, we still only talking about, like, the best examples of what the music has to offer. And number I two, know, like, we, I, I, made I, I made a point to say that. 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 I did make a point to say that. And another, another thing, though, like, like, who is out here? Like, how many, how long can we, all right, how long can we go on with this, uh, with with this hip hop sound, like this this hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Like, how long is it supposed well, to last? I'm glad Are you asked call that DC because clicks of sound now. I'm glad you asked that because look at how long Kendrick's been out there and gaining his steam. He getting more and more followers every year, and he been out you know there what, for a good though? while now. You know what, Aaron? I'm gonna co-sign what Ann is saying because I feel like that that is the same thing with our show. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Like, 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 we gained the momentum, like hammer. If it's oh, that good, was horrible. if it's good, that you're gonna gain. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but I fucking hate that particular hammer song. But, but I it feel wasn't like, wrong. It wasn't wrong. I, 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 feel like, <laughs> I feel like, like, like the slow burn is better. Cause when you, when you, when you just, when you, when you come out real fast. You burn up like designer, and then you fall off. And if you look at it, if you look at it, we've always been about the slow burn. One of one of our most celebrated artists, period, of any genre is Sade. She come out with an album every fourteen years. She like Jeepers Creepers in real life. I can't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> every twenty three years, every twenty three years, Sade pop up with a new album. One of the most but, celebrated figures in our, in our culture. But Sade is though. She that Sade is that work. Exactly, and she ain't going nowhere. That's what I'm saying. It's always been about the slow. Yeah. Um. So you think? All right, so what you what you saying is that we're going to see a resurgence in like, you know, not just the music, but the but the energy that hip hop used to re- have reciprocated to it. We we in the midst of it right now. Like this is the first time in history where all of the people that are considered old heads are still active. They critically acclaimed. People are waiting on their projects, and their projects are well received. That's true, and 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 even though people from the new school are telling them to go sit down somewhere other people are like basically telling them right to right shit the fuck it's, up. It's, yeah it's, <laughs> it's, i feel like hip-hop i feel like hip-hop music is in a good space right now and hip-hop in general you know i went back i lined up some examples for all the other elements where hip-hop it might not be the same expression as form but it's it branched into something different so it's not like dead for me it's just changed um, I would like to see during my lifetime a resurgence of the element because I feel like hip hop is All right, very look. different from the other like musical genres. It's died and and reincarnated. Well, actually, like funk because not not funk but jazz. Jazz had like uh, had like nine lives. Yeah. I think hip hop is, is is like the same way. I think it's gonna have nine lives. I don't think we're gonna love what happens at the end of it, <laughs> unfortunately. I think, I but think this might be a little messed up. I think as long as there's like race issues and like problems of that nature in the country, that urban culture is always gonna be under the microscope like that. It's always gonna be put on a pedestal or, like know, that. Or, you know, if you're J. Cole, as long as there are clothes to fold and almond drinks. As, and almond as long as there's laundry to do. Every culture is going to be rolled up in a blanket. Every culture is going to be romanticized. It always has been. Every culture is always going to be romanticized. Yeah. No, that's very true. Because that, I mean, it's not going to change from generation to generation. You're always going to have your shit 
with every generation. There's always going to be something poignant to, to talk about, to speak about, to speak out about. I just it's wish always, that Aaron, it's always like, what Aaron was talking about was true. I really wish that we could get to reciprocating right now. But the reciprocation is in them emulating it, I feel like. Even though it might be a negative at this point. Cause like like I it, it's always it's always resonated with like that rebellious air in the youth or whatnot, and that nothing like nothing embodies that more than or, urban culture and hip hop and less like future emulators. Future emulators they just gonna express it in a different way, but they still gonna find some kind of way to stamp it as urban culture or hip hop. I'm, I'm you know I get it, but it's just. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I just feel like I feel like we not uh like cuz we talked about this before like the art art being dead because of everything that that's accessible to us now, you know. And um but I don't mm-hmm. think it's dead. I feel I like I think it's I, feel, I think it's less celebrated. I just I feel like that's um that's a lot of the reason why we don't uh reciprocate it cuz we don't uh we don't have we don't have the same the same energy in the same perspective of things as um, previous generations that um sure. that, that helped create the genre. Like we don't have the, those same aspects on life. And it oh, may yeah, take most. longer because because what you're talking about reciprocating because you don't have a place to come from with it because Kendrick has the education that you don't have. He mm-hmm. has the knowledge that you didn't get. He, that's, like, yeah, that's he, number one. He's trying to educate you, and when you don't know anything. You're starting out from your infancy. It's going to take a long time for you to, you know, like what we're talking about, like Raquel and, you know, like Cool G Rap and Big Daddy, those people, we were moving along with them. Mm-hmm. Same time that they were moving, we were moving. Exactly. Yep. That's what I'm, that's what like, I'm talking about. Like, though. like we were in the same mind frame. We were in the same place. So fast forward to today, you got people like Triple X. Would you say that his fan base is moving with him? Unfortunately, yeah. Is that not hip hop? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> I feel bad for saying that. I feel bad for saying that. It's something. It's something. It's it stems from. It might. Possibly somewhere down the line stem from hip hop, but it's that but same that's interaction. Point. But see, yeah. our idea, our idea of following, our idea of following up behind what somebody did nowadays is as simple as a tweet. It's you know what I'm saying it's a, a like on a pic. You know what I'm saying it's that type of it's sign of the times. Yeah, it's that type of vibe, but it's not it's not the same. No. Like I feel I feel like um, when you listen to Public Enemy. Like you listen to go anybody, I'm urging you right now. Like if you have never heard it <laughs> for whatever reason, go listen to It Takes a Nation of Millions. And you can't tell me that you can't hear that. Like I can listen to that and say, yeah, they was definitely in the street saying, you know, but fight see, the power. Like you know what like, I'm saying? Like it's that like, type of. It's like me asking you to compare the '90s to the '50s. Like the way they execute, the way they move, everything they do is different. Just because it's a sign of the times. Technology that's available to them, the way that they live, the way that they move, is all different. But okay, let me and let me let me piggyback off that. The problem with all of that is, even though the times were different before, there were certain fundamentals that were always in place, like knowing instruments. Yep. <laughs> that's another thing I want. That's, that's, that's another thing. That's another thing I wanted to say too, because that's true. When you, I got when you look the government at, for that. When you look at hip hop now, like you know, a lot of these, a lot of these people ain't shit without their, without their laptops and their uh, beat machines. But see, at the same time, on the other end of the spectrum, I get them credit for that for being creative enough to be able to figure that shit out and sit down and figure out a way to do that shit on a computer. They not getting computer classes like we got computer classes. I understand all that, but what happens when all of that shit is non-existent? What are you gonna do then? And well, no, that a, shit is non-existent. Like, a Niggas gonna pick up twigs like and replicated. pebbles. <laughs> but but a, a lot of that shit, and even if you're teaching yourself, 
you're not teaching yourself from a point of innovation. You're just replicating what somebody else already did. Exactly. With, with, from with, a beat case. Well, what you well, what you had to work with. No, you, you know what you can do. If I'm if all I have you can still is a free app, how to play shit. Like Look, if all, I have, if all I have is a free app and I can sit there and make you sound Beethoven, then that's a talent right there. But I need you to flip that talent into something that is innovative and not that is following, not replicating. I feel, like cannot, I feel like we're getting I feel like we're getting there. Can You're not there. It can't, it can't survive. When you cut off the blood supply... That shit, nah, is dead. Well, art's not, isn't nurtured in our community either. That's my point. So you cut off the blood supply. The blood supply Mm -hmm. is, there there are technical and, like, that stupid ass Vince (laughs) Staples-esque argument (laughs) that people will like, that like to make, that shit gets on my fucking nerves. Like that, you know, or you can't judge art and you can't, no, no, no. There are technical no. aspects to that oh shit. Oh my god. I just read I just read an article a couple minutes ago about Britney Spears on Instagram painting a picture, two pictures as a matter of fact. One of them is like kindergarten level flowers and the other is just lines on the page. And somebody bought them joints for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> we live in an environment where somebody is buying fucking Britney Spears. I'm doing my, my air quotes art. Where Britney Spears could have just fucking drew goddamn lines on a paper with her foot and a pen. A fucking, fucking stick figure. <laughs> somebody going to pay $10,000 for that shit because Britney Spears did it. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Art, art is under attack too. But well, that's what I'm talking about. When we talk about hip hop, that's exactly what we're talking about. We're not yeah, just talking about music. We're talking about just art. Just because it's under attack, don't mean you still don't got those people out there that's doing it for the right reasons. All right, so as long as long as I'm one of we, them, you can't convince me that it's otherwise. <laughs> we we talk about we talk about the um the the fifth element um a lot and um. We mentioned, we talked about one day how Double Dutch is connected. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to I wanna, double I wanna Dutch. I want to ask, ask, ask y'all a question now. When the last time you seen little girls outside Double Dutch? Like, like never. When I work with kids. When I work with kids. And What's partly wrong? because I initiated it. It was weird. I initiated But when was the last time you saw any kids outside on the sidewalk doing anything? Kids don't be outside. <laughs> they be in their phones. <laughs> Or they be in and is that how, it's, fucking duty. Exactly. So is that is that hip hop being reciprocated? Us, or us taking out our energy. Five oh. nights at Freddy's. Right. <laughs> See, I blame that. That's a different episode too. Nah, I blame that. The same episode. Nah, but it, that starts in like at home. You know what? I don't really. Yeah, I don't get that because. And I think it's what you just said because we had gaming systems when we were, you know, young. Yeah. And That's it wasn't like, yeah. I mean, everybody is like, but but our shit is better. But our shit at the time was the shit because it was new. So it was still the shit. So all this shit that you know, it was better. We yeah. didn't have but, better at that point. So we were using whatever we had. So we were playing though, like, Vision. We were game, playing, you know, game, playing. For me, Super Nintendo. We did Super Nintendo after we came home. We was out in the street. And that the street was the point. Home. That was the point I was getting ready to make. We weren't allowed to sit on our Atari and our fucking Coleco no. Vision playing Burger Time all night. It's either you can't go outside or you can't come in the house. <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> it's one or the other. Yeah. It's not you wanted. You didn't want to stay in the house and play the game. You can't go outside or you can't go in the house. It's one or the right. other. Right. So you went outside because and I don't know people are talking about how dangerous. You know, I don't like. I don't like being. Be I don't like being. Something I can't do. You tell me I can't go outside. I'm going outside. I'm staying out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but kids can't going. can't like sit in the front of the sidewalk anymore and just jump rope. And that's a that's a big part of a bigger issue where it's a lack of unity in the communities out here. Yeah. 
that's true too. There's no more like like back in the days, like the neighbor down the block could have popped me or something or popped me in my ear. I can't or believe told. we're fucking making Aaron's point with double dutch. So you do yeah, realize that, that, <laughs> that this is what I Aaron's initiate, talking about. Said, Our sense of community dutch. is gone like the like the shit that that would have basically fueled the original culture of hip hop is now non existent as well. This is making me mad because I just watched uh, War of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Apes I was together just looking strong. At Apes together strong. You know, God damn you know another. You know another <laughs> argument. You know another what? argument. Well, for why? For why? I know. I know that you know this, this thing is like in the ground because. Wow. The yeah, it's in the ground because the the nineties the nineties um is like is like point of reference for a lot of people like that's point of reference yeah. for you know most of it and i'm you know listening to my mob deep the other day i'm just like i'm just like you know like it's weird that this is the type of like this is the type of energy that gets me through my day you know what i'm saying this like i was listening to prodigies they shit like you know we rob land like white men please to overthrow your whole shit while shaking your hand i was like damn that's just so cold you know what i'm saying but it's like why do i need that type of energy to feel like i could survive in this world i need to be on some you know what i'm saying wartime all day type of energy you know like it's mm-hmm. it's in that's like that's, knowledge. Knowledge that's the energy love. that's the energy that we still dealing with now like it's this like you know cold um, no fun, just you know what I'm saying, straight to business type of attitude, you know what I'm That's saying, to get to get to get through this to get through this work. But I'm saying the point I'm trying to make is that the nineties narrative, the nineties hip hop narrative is what generated what we dealing with today. It generated a lot of it, you know. And it's true. And it's like in this it's like in this lowest form now where it's just like yeah, you know I was just gonna get, I was just gonna where people that. where people are yeah. just we just so cold hearted and don't give a fuck about anything. So I that's look, why I'm saying I was, like, I like I look at it like like back in the nineties, the nineties was one of the last eras where people really put knowledge on a pistol people like it wasn't a sad thing it wasn't spoken or whatever but like yeah like niggas read niggas dropped out of school and taught themselves how to do shit and do stuff nah. like that and exactly now nah, dropped out what eighth grade yep like and then read like it's all about building on your own and building your own set of knowledge but like nowadays people just emulate that like they're not doing, they're not putting the same work in, they're not doing the same studying or whatever. They just emulating that, so they sound a certain way. They put certain lines together. They they conscious enough to put certain lines together, have certain thoughts, but they ain't putting the same work in. They ain't got the same depth of knowledge. They ain't got the same knowledge itself. They ain't got the same concept of what's going on out here. Right, exactly. Because like I said, like we just got done saying, is nobody outside mm-hmm. anymore. Is nobody experiencing life. To be able to put that type of energy into it, you know what I'm saying? Like you had to. Well, your life is it is no longer out living in the street, not in the street, right. street, but like your life is not outside. Your life is now on the ground. Your life is on Facebook. Your life exactly. is yeah. That's that's where everybody at. Fucking with it. like I. Twitter. Like y'all know, y'all know. I be on Instagram every day, and like you know, I see a bunch of posts that's always just like you know, um. You know, tighten tightening my circle, and you know, I just need to focus on, you know, what I'm saying, just me and mine, and this all I need, and I'm gonna stay in the house, and you know, what I'm saying, it's cool. what's the point? In, what's the point in going out anyway? All that type of stuff. You know what? Like, well, so, so, like, I've been listening to Charlemagne the God on his Brilliant Idiots podcast, which I, you know, subscribe to, listen to a whole lot, and on um the Breakfast Club in the morning, and. He is really starting to push just stepping away from social media. I think it's a good idea. I do it all the time. You know. Sign out. It ain't nothing to sign out. Sign out. When I look at my phone and I see that I signed out, I don't go back to it. I go find something else to do. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We need a we need a lot more of that. And it's funny that we talking about social media like, you know, being part of like um what we dealing with now because yeah. <laughs> I don't wanna keep saying that, but um <laughs> it's funny that we uh that we talking about social media being part of it because I was thinking that like 
it's ironic how like you know how many friends and people we like you know quote unquote interact with but like it's not like how often do we talk to these people like we not really connecting on facebook we scroll by but, like a pic and you know what i'm saying like we, like social media is made for us to connect with each other and we still not that, doing it you know what i'm saying that like that's crazy that same technology is a part of the decline in the art for me as well because like you don't have the yeah. same energy you get from two artists sitting in the studio working together you got one artist sitting in houston and another artist sitting in la and he just emailing the beat and like and they're not like, they're not able to get the energy off of each other right like you would in the studio right so um let me cut us short real quick because we got a whole bunch of people and things to put out to lunch which is Really kind of sad, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so today, okay. let's let's do a weird thing where we go round robin. So, okay. um, uh, Aaron, what What's do that? you want to put out to lunch? Who, who or what do you want to put out to lunch today? Um. Damn. I don't know who who I'm gonna put out the lunch today. <laughs> Keeping with our theme, you know, for the show as always. Like, who is who's getting your goat right now? Who's who's, who's grinding your gears? Who's grinding my gears? Mm-hmm. Um. Hey, I think we already put so we already put some people out that I wanted to say <laughs> initially. Um. Yeah. You give I'm us guessing Mears is somewhere. Is, is somewhere <laughs> in there? Cause Mears is always like when there's an out to. He's worse than like Donald Trump getting donkey today. Now I feel like Mears should be out to lunch every day just on GT. Uh, yeah. How about that? Well, I was I was watching this I was watching this um interview uh what is a hip hop documentary and they were talking about like how uh certain people was like banned from videos at a certain point in time uh, like around the 90s and stuff yep and um matter of fact Jean Grey was one of the um artists on there talking and she was talking about like how she seen her name up there and she was like damn I ain't even got a video but um they were saying that BT <laughs> BT had, uh, sent, had a statement out there that um you know they didn't they weren't welcoming those types of artists because they didn't promote with the with the um their station the was about was- at the time, yeah, which was some bullshit. Right. And um like, you know, that I was just like looking at that like in amazement, like, you know, like like that's really but what remember, was going on. Remember during that same time period, late night B E T would play tip drill. <laughs> yeah. How about this? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I guess what I'm, I'm what I, I guess <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is I'm guess what I'm saying is that I want I want to put Viacom out the lunch. For being a part of that. Hey. Fuck you, Vicon. So <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> uh Ant. I I think mine's is like an extension of Aaron's because like I wanna put these platforms out there that I was talking about earlier after lunch. Cause like I was hip-hop saying DX? like hip hop DX in uh the breakfast club and everyday struggle i don't know about drink chance i thought about using drink chance for recess um i i champion nori yeah nori is doing a beautiful, he's doing a beautiful yeah. thing over there i just wish, i just wish he was a little more coherent i needed to be a little <laughs> less drunk a little less drunk yeah yeah a little less drinking a little more championing <laughs> yeah I mean, right 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 <laughs> Like it's kind of hard. I mean, they to, got to, to, to like get the gist of the champion, and when everybody is like, "Yeah, show us two hours." Yeah, <laughs> he's like rubbing on his when he rubbing on his, he's rubbing on the taco meat is a wrap. <laughs> you know, he's not rubbing on his taco meat is over. Like the interview's Why done. Taco meat though. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's over. It's done. Like, oh, but it's crazy. I don't know. But platforms like that, platforms like that are in a unique position right now because the game is all like streams and likes and clicks and internet presence. Mm. And most of those platforms are embedded in the internet. Look, 
I'll say this about everyday struggle. I don't always agree with him. Sometimes he goes off the fucking rails, depending on what day it is. <laughs> but thank God Joe is over there. So yeah. sometimes you need him to just pimp slap the shit out of mixtape academics back into that chair so he will shut his fucking pie hole and let go no, Joe miss. He missed crucial opportunities. He does. But but he still, even with all that, he still, is, in general, is the voice of reason. Yeah. I want I want more input from the desk because she seemed like she got some good input, too. Well, she's a true moderator. She's not going to come out on either side. She's just yeah. going to pose the questions and play devil's advocate. If somebody says something, she's going to ask you the question. The obvious opposite of what you're talking about. Question. Right. I um disrespecting your elders in hip hop and um that's for anybody who does it. So I'm not just talking about disrespecting your elders though, like directly, like like fuck like when Joey Badass like keeps talking about how he's better than Tupac or like, I mean, I mean that shit too, but I mean things that are more, um, a little less obvious. Like when you hear people continuously throwing around terms like narrative rap mm-hmm. or, or boom bap era or you know like oh well you know that was when um you know rap was narrative people told stories like you mean when they were coherent so, so um like who 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 you feel like are examples of that like people that uh that look at you know those aspects of hip hop is just the old school part of it i'm i'm actually picking up back backing off of what both of you talked about because that shit is pushed by some of these outlets and like online blogs, like they'll frame things without the proper context. So that's really yeah. what I'm talking about. It's like you need to have the proper context. And because you don't, you need to have a resident old head. I don't give right. a shit if it, like what's going on over at. There should be at least two or three people at your outlet that were from different tiers of hip hop at different time periods so they can pimp slap your ass and tell you no you dumbass we all weren't doing crack like who said that shit <laughs> like yeah. i've literally seen people now post well they don't 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 that dumb ass shit though vlad is all that fucking know better that we weren't all t- doing crack well, Vlad is also Vlad is also white too. Like, how often did he? How how much time did he really spend in black communities <laughs> to Yo, know anything? In that post that I was talking about, no, I heard about, Vlad got received. I, think, I heard uh, Vlad got received. Vlad actually said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna say this to y'all. This is what Vlad said. Vlad said that he felt like J Cole was a better lyricist." Um, then, oh my God, who did he say? Oh my God. He said he thought J. Cole was a better lyricist than, um, oh my God. This will have to get out. Somebody. <laughs> somebody from back in the day? It was somebody who was more fairly recent, though. Right. And I can't remember, but like. Lord Jamar checked the shit out. He was like, are you fucking on? He thought, he thought, are you on crack right now? Right. He was like, I feel like, oh, oh, and it's really gonna hate this. Black thought. Yeah, he said that. He said that. Yeah. He said no, that, you know what pissed me off, what pissed no. me off about that? <laughs> what pissed me off about that? <laughs> no, but listen, what pissed me off about the whole uh, black thought argument, and it's not, it's not just Vlad that say that. Like, it's other people that feel like Oh well, uh, black shit didn't even be good in the conversation because like, is he really a rapper? And it's like, what makes him not? Is it because oh, he was the root? 
he with the roots and they use real drums? Is it because Again, he uses the actual words? Asked, like, did you watch that Tiny Desk drone I sent you? They fucking killed that shit, yo. <laughs> and you are preaching to the choir. You don't... <laughs> hey, that Bert, that shit down. That song is better than J. Cole. Let's see what, what Lord Jamar wound up telling him is what me and my boy laugh about all the time. Like, he said, Vlad. He said, I don't think you know what words mean. <laughs> yeah, because he, he, said, you don't, he said, you don't mean that Black Thought is a better lyricist. He's like, he said, you mean, sorry, that J. Cole's better lyricist. He said, you, what, what you mean to say is that J. Cole has more popular songs. Which is which could possibly be true. Like that m- may be true, but it doesn't right. mean that he's a better lyricist. And see, like that, I have to make those kinds of distinctions. But nowadays, with these people who are knuckleheads that don't know instruments, <laughs> that have no clue about what real music is, they can't articulate anything. That they don't know what criteria that, that they're using themselves to judge music. So they can't make a distinction. They can't tell you why some shit is superior. Right. Can Can I say something about because the whole lyrics? And I was just going to say they don't think that lyricism is even important anymore. So yeah. But can I can I say something about the whole lyricism thing too? Yeah. Though? Because like that's what we tend to do now. Like we tend to say like, all right, we keeping it alive because you know we got we got people that's actually spitting bars. We got people that's actually you know uh, saying words that you know what I'm saying that that makes sense and all that type of thing. But when we talk about hip hop, that sounds dumb and shit. By the way, people are saying words, (laughs) right? And we can't we can't stress this enough that you know. Like hip hop is a culture. It's not just you know. It's not just these lyrics that you hear somebody spitting. It, it, it's it's the it's the the breaks. It's you know the the b boys. It's the the whole art of it. The greedy art and all that. And yeah. like when you when you reject, I don't want to say people are rejecting everything else, but I think like you know when we put this like whole lyrics over everything narrative in, it it always comes back to okay, well you know all we need is the rap part. And that's hip hop. You know, we don't really need, um, you know, everything else that is supposed to be about. Keep that old school, you know, uh, uh, b boy and shit out of here. You know, what I'm it's just like you know, this is what we need to keep it alive. Just, just these words that we're saying. Like we don't need your break beats or none of that. We could, we could throw these trap hats on it. See, here's my only issue with that, and I said this before on the show and to you, Aaron. Um, this shit ain't really even lyrics over everything. Let's do that shit and see what it look like. Because it don't fucking look like this. Right. Let's fuck with lyrics over everything for a while and see what we can do with that. I yeah, that, that, you know. That. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, too. I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind that at all. But, um, I think that's, a, I think it's just another reason why a lot of people don't think about the stuff I talk about when we say hip-hop. We just... The, the rap act of now you put it was like wait a minute wait a minute something something wrong now you know what I'm saying like we done, right, we done got right. rid of the you done got rid of the DJ I know everybody remember when Lil Wayne said fuck DJs and all that like we done got rid of the DJ we done you know X Nader B boys and you know graffiti artists you know what I'm saying like we don't we don't need all that you know really you know what I'm saying and we done got rid of all that but, but now all of a sudden funny, though, now all of a sudden we hear Hello? Yeah. Yeah, but now all of a sudden we hear and now it's like, all right, well, let's get rid of the, the lyrics and everything that MCs used to do all together. And now everybody's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now y'all fucking the game up. It's like, why did it take for it to get to that point <laughs> for everybody? Well, you to- know what is, what's so funny is that when you start talking to these people, when, when they interview certain people behind the scenes, and to piggyback on what, what Anna said, a lot of the shit that, that, that goes down is not dead. Like, there's a bunch of artists that are newer, like Vic Mensa, who still were ta- tagging. Hmm. They, were, they were they were still graph artists. There's people who are still hip hop dance, and there's people who, was, who like who still you know are are um going to DJ battles and competitions like that. But it, it just needs a push. It, it needs to be pushed a little bit it's further. Hard. It's harder to market the elements. 
It is. Is to market the MC. Like the MC is the easiest to market. But the the issue is you need to have someone responsible to do that. And I hate to say this. What we part of what we had to do was to snatch like to start to start saying fuck all this commerce shit and to snatch it back and start doing it how we used to do it back in the day. Like creating spaces where we did that shit on our own. Mm. Right. I don't know. I think Chance the Rapper is kind of responsible. Even though I feel like he has a and that's dark a good side we don't know about. I don't give a shit. What, he, what he's doing right now, that's a model everybody fucking needs to follow. Yeah, he's, he's very responsible with the MC moniker. And, and and he's out there basically saying fuck, you know, you know, when out here, like on my own, like that, to me, that's the equivalent of a fourth and byway records in 2017. Mm. You know, that's a fucking sleeping bag right now. Right. But yeah, fuck all y'all who keep who keep fucking disrespecting <laughs> the culture and your elders by not bringing proper context into this shit and just slapping some shit like a fucking moniker onto an era, trying to boil it down to oh yeah that well that was the New York that was the NYC era that was the New York era except for the fact like and it's always used in a in a freaking um, pejorative way. It's like, oh, oh, well, no, that was well, that, that that was that narrative rap. Yeah. Or you know that was on oh, that was the boom bap era. That was the um the um the the New York NYC era. Like when people did, except for the fact that New York was on the map at that time. So was Los Angeles. So was the South. In its way. So were pockets of Texas and Seattle and like everybody did not come from New York and LA at the time. No, no, they didn't. I was just listening to the get up the other day thinking like I gotta remind myself a lot of times watching and listening to some of that stuff that, you know, that was like eighty some of that stuff was like eighty five, eighty seven. It's like it's yeah. like multiplying it's like multiplying now though. Music is coming from every region. Yeah, but it doesn't count because everything it's sounds inspired. like it, it all sounds southern. It's in, I was gonna say it's inspired by other regions, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it all sounds southern. Yeah, it's that see, that shit wouldn't have happened it, like back in the day. Like that shit wouldn't have happened. And I beg to differ with any, and I will sit and fucking argue you down to the ground if you sit and try to tell me that everything from L.A. They absolutely fucking did not. <laughs> they did not. They just did it. Right. So, like, you trying to assign, like, being a an exceptional lyricist and wordsmith to a a city. Or a time period is fucking whack. Is shit. Yeah, that don't even make that don't even make sense. It's but it makes thing. sense to some of the people in this generation. They think that oh, well, that was the time period. To, but see, my problem with that then goes: you can't straddle the fence. You can't be in my house using my genre that I, that I help create and I help cultivate. And then want to be over, have your leg over in another place saying, oh, well, um, that's not what hip-hop is anymore. How you going to tell me what hip-hop is? Like exactly. Said earlier, that's, how you going to tell that dude who, who's looking at you, who used to do that shit in the park, what fucking, what? Right. Right. What hip-hop is. Right. You're not even, you don't even have, like, the, 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 the groundwork to say that you know I, I was doing it in the street like you know what i'm saying everybody doing it everybody doing it on instagram they doing it on facebook <laughs> you know what i'm saying like it ain't the it's not it's not the same you can't you can't tell that man like he he doing something or even that female you can't tell her that she ain't doing it right ah, that's time. Something i really hate i can't stand that term wash that gets on my nerves it's like that's the worst 
So fuck you if you're not respecting your hip hop elders. Fuck you if you're telling people to get out of their own house. Nobody's leaving their own house. And I've said yeah. this before, and I'm a I'm a end the shit on this. Slap the fuck out. We didn't walk into our parents' houses in my generation. We didn't walk into their R and B houses and tell them what to do. Right. We innovated within the constraints of what was already laid as a foundation. In fact, okay. you know what's funny? It's funny that um the people that's like forty and up now, you know, are still the ones that's like making like, you know, the, the biggest impacts in the culture. Like you don't <laughs> you you're not getting a lot of and the internet same went crazy for Cameron's mixtape. Yeah, I guess. Uh, you know how I feel about King. Well, <laughs> that that's part of my <laughs> can't look, tell me in this house that we all built that I got to get out. When we didn't like, or we not didn't like, but we wanted to innovate and do our own thing from what our parents did, we created hip-hop. Mm-hmm. We left their house and built our own house. Now, mind yeah. you, that shit was a house built out of other shit that they already, you know, used. But we still built something that looked a lot, that looked vastly different than anything that, you know, had been seen prior to I on still, a much larger scale. Right. I still want to throw in that it was born out of resourcefulness because we all didn't play instruments in that generation. Absolutely. But we we innovated in a way that was still highly skilled you can you know tell right. the difference between someone who actually you know like Pete Rock who cried the first right. time he heard the, the the sample for Troy and someone like Brother Love <laughs> who, who, who fucking heard somebody else's sample and was like you know what being the raccoon scavenger that I am Trash Panda. I'm just going to jack this shit the way... Or, you know, I'm just going to jack this the barge over here and just throw a drum track under it. Fuck. Why not? Because, I mean, it's all yeah. hip-hop, right? See, but that's another part of the lack of knowledge, too, I think. Because, like, a lot of a lot of people, like, um, especially especially um, that all they use is these laptops and beat machines like I said they don't even realize that a lot of hip hop artists back in the day was actually still using real instruments yeah they were a lot like, of it's not yeah it's not a lot of that isn't just exclusive to um certain artists like you know they were still using and and I think the reason behind that is with a lot of um what a lot of people don't know is because they don't pay attention to the production of these albums and these classics that we talk about is that they were working with actual musicians. Like, they were working with, like, you know, um, older funk musicians that realized what the hip-hop crowd was doing. Right. Well, I mean, they did that, too. But even when they sampled Aaron, they were still sampling actual instruments. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And 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 you had to have an ear to be able to put those shits together. Right. I, I mean, if you're pulling horns from one place and organ from another and bass from a different place and like you have to hear melodies and harmonies to pull those things together and marry them up and make them make sense right i was watching the uh interview with cool hurt earlier thinking that because he was talking about like how his his way of sampling like he had to like use one break from one record and then fade into another record that had a different break but it had to uh -huh. it had to blend together it had to blend together the right way or it just didn't sound right that yeah. segues into that segues into producers. Yeah. Which I tie into DJs. Well, we yeah, because they it's the same thing essentially. Now it is. So you know that aspect of the culture is still alive. Yeah. DJs, yeah, but it's DJs also, are still. Well, as he as Aaron just pointed out, it's kind of that's on the record. Neglected. It's neglected. It ain't neglected. It's just nowadays you got that mainstream counterpart, that mainstream contemporary wearing the mask of hip hop. It's lazy. It's getting all the attention. It's wearing the mask, of, but it ain't the legit thing. It's lazy. 
Uh, it is it is it is lazy but that's what that's what you know that's where we at though like um when we talk like what i was saying earlier about like you know um our reaction to to these things you know what i'm saying like we you know what i'm saying i hate to say it but we this generation we lazy about a lot of stuff like we go about it you know in a way where it's like oh i ain't got time for that like that's the slogan for this generation i ain't got time for that <laughs> anybody got you know? time for that <laughs> exactly <laughs> So, like, um, <laughs> you know, when you talk about, like, you know, I always think about most, most deaf, um, saying, uh, saying, uh, you know, next time before you ask, you know, where's hip hop going or what's it doing, ask yourself, what am yep. I doing? Where, where am I going? I going? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. And when I look around and I see a lot of, you know, um, uh, uh, my contemporaries, like, it's, like we don't we don't carry that same energy. Yeah, we talk about it. Yeah, we you know what I'm saying. It, it, we 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 uh we still have our debates and all that type of stuff. But we don't. I'm not seeing that energy like out in the street. I'm not seeing that energy put out in, in, in reacting to what what's going on in the world right now. You know, like where is, back then people did that. This all it all manifests online people had these discussions online they watch the videos online they go in the comments online like the internet is where everything is happening you look at the culture of the internet you look at the the pics from the internet like it's all spitters it's all the number the top pics it's all right. great and albums and all are less optimistic you know and are we we i hope that what you're saying is true it, it, it's going. It's it's either true or it's moving in that direction. I really, I really. Regardless of that, I need people to stop telling the old heads to get out the house they built. If you want to do something they, new, they don't do leave that. My, they haven't been. Leave, leave my fucking house and go get your own goddamn been, house. They haven't been right. doing that for a while now. Okay. They haven't been doing go for a while now. Desktop or whatever you know, desktop or whatever you want to do. I think, no. I think and somebody had to sit down. Somebody had, are dead in the, in that <laughs> arena over there. <laughs> somebody had to sit down. We don't know about, but that suddenly stopped. Well, that suddenly stopped. Well, that's what we gonna put XXX, Tintashi on. Well, like in that, in whatever that new genre that gets created, Death Hop or whatever. Go put that over there. Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly that's exactly what it sounds like. It's all it's all types of things going on with it now too. Like you got like that sound of it. You got like these this this R and B rap sound of it, where it's like that that that, word, that the word. I was listening to I was listening to a a a, a, a sample by uh, this one dude. I don't even know if I I might I don't know if I brought it up a last episode, but um, this one dude let me hear a sample and it was like an Alexander O'Neill sample. And I can hear it in the background, but it's hey. like he EQ like he EQ'd it real low, but I can still hear it. And I'm like, that sounds like a dead memory of something that used to be great. That's what that beat sound like right now. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just like it's like it's like this is this is what things used to sound like in the background, like how things used to be and it's on now. They sound like that. Wow. Is it the that? Uh, no, um, he was just the guy was just letting me hear um that uh, particular beat, and um, I was like, you know, I was listening to it. And I'm like, yeah, and I was explaining to him what I was hearing. I'm like, yeah, that's um that that sample in the background. He was like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, because he was an older guy, um, and so he knew what I was talking about. But I ain't think about it till later that that's exactly what it sounded like. It's just like you know, like the way think, the way the music is made reflects how we feel about the world. The way the music is made reflects think, it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that that technique in music comes from not only that feeling of frustration that our culture feels in the world right now, but it also comes from an, an ability to express it musically the way that we had in the past. So they doing it. They like they not getting the same classes, the same the same lessons we got on how to do certain stuff musically. So they figuring it out any way they can do it te- technologically. Um, I think that um, in a way, I agree. In a in a way that is, in a way that's the spirit of hip hop. It's just the technical parts of it, like that right there. That right like there the transcends hip hop. 
Yeah, the technical like aspect the of it is like of, of, that. Of that transcends hip hop. That goes back to to Negro spirituals, like wading in the water and following a drinking board and all that. You know what I'm saying. Well, I'm gonna need yeah. following the drinking gourd and wading in the water not to sound like peekaboo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like all your friends are dead. I don't. I don't want all your friends to sound dead either. I don't. I don't want any of that. I don't we want don't to sound want like it. face off. I don't want it to sound like any of that crap. We don't. We don't want it, but that's what it. That's the situation right now. That's sick. That's our situation. That is a sick, sad place. Yeah. It okay. is. So. So um, then the next that, generation of hip hop music. It's going to find a way out of that. It's going to find a way out of that. And then a revolution, which won't be televised, will begin. Okay. <laughs> so coming back from 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 lunch, Ant has now told us. The revolution that's not, that's not going to be televised is still coming. Okay. <laughs> I think it already happened. You think so? Where the hell was I? Right, <laughs> that's how I, that's how I feel we about it. it. We witness it right now because mm-hmm. these artists and these entertainers that are influencing the next generation, they not restricted by the labels and quote unquote, not even quote unquote, but white people, they not restricted by that. They got like direct contact with the fans on social media or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we get ready to see a change in the artist, the customer dynamic, artist customer dynamic. So do you think you think that's what's happening with all music in general? Like you know, as the years going by, because like now, like I was uh, I was sitting here talking to my sister the other day. I'm like I'm like we don't, you know, we don't appreciate the fact that we can I can literally go on my phone. I got streaming apps just like you, and I can literally go on my uh, streaming app. And I could listen to something from the fifties, from the sixties. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like from any, yeah. from any particular genre. Yeah. Yeah, um, like, for prime example, prime example. Look at that last day La Soul album. It was crowdsourced. It was crowdfunded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The fans right. paid for that. Yep. A lot of so people are changing. doing that. It's changing. The thing is changing. The culture is more popular for people that's not artists or entertainers. They have more well, input. They have more control. They have more sway over what's going on. And I think that that's a good way of doing, like, following in the footsteps of what, Ken, not Kendrick, of what Chance is doing. Like, find other avenues. You know, don't don't plug into these conglomerates. Right, yeah, yeah. But I well, feel like I mean, the conglomerates, uh, it's, a, it's a race between, between the people that are taking part in the culture and the people that are trying to take advantage of it. Yeah, that's true, but they're both they're <laughs> both trying to find a way to adapt to it at the same time. But in order to do what what the the ones that are conglomerates, they don't fucking want to adapt. They just want to fucking make money. They don't give a shit how. Exactly. They're trying to find they're trying to find a way to adapt their business model to make the most money possible off of the way that it's going now. Right. That's why so, Apple Music got that deal with Chance the Rapper because so they're trying we, to like be innovative. Wanna, right, but I mean, you still want to follow models like that so you can have more cre- cause like Dayla can make music they that they fucking want to make Dayla is never gonna make music like you know what you're hearing now they're always right. gonna be Dayla and do Dayla and they have to do that right. cause they cause they respect to, you know hip hop too much and they still are in it for the love too much to just you know and again People, you know, like De La and groups like, you know, like Wu-Tang and stuff, we don't want to hear them sound like Future, Future or Uzi. Right. Like, and if you, you ever do, if you ever do a song pure creative. <laughs> like, I don't, I just, I don't want to hear that. But nobody wants to hear that. Like, you want to hear them still be, you know be them and, um, and do what they do more. If Daylight ever flowed like Future on the track, I feel like it would be a deeper message behind that. And it would take some diving. I think, I, I think, I think, I think, 
the thing with weed. <laughs> I don't know about that one. I think what we need to do is we need to um help 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 carry on the tradition of what we know it was with the next generation. I feel like if we if we do that, then it's 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 better. It's in a it's in a better place because. You know, a lot of us, like, especially nowadays, like, we in a in a place, like I said, of complacency. And hip-hop didn't really express that kind of energy when it was in its infancy. So, we, right. um, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, and agree. I feel like, at the same time, you can't hinder growth. Like, what might be considered growth. Is that what you're talking about? Are, are you calling this shit growth? Ah, growth, for better or worse, is still growth. Okay, and I'm going to argue growth in this sense. What we're talking about is not and largely appreciated growth. What we're talking about is we're talking about um, transcending and and progressing and moving higher. Are we in fact moving higher? There's plenty of artists. There's plenty of people who are moving higher, but they aren't getting the same recognition as people who are just vibrating at a low level. Very true, because. So we don't want to we don't want to like act like those people don't exist the people who are doing okay. it correctly. Okay. That's what I was getting ready to say. That's a lot of unfortunately what we you know are hearing in the mainstream is you know all the shit that's not. But mainstream mainstream progress. always been an enemy. It always been an enemy. Not necessarily because as we said back in the day this the stuff that was mainstream to us because None of it was super mainstream, so everything right. existed basically kind of on the same plane. And there was always a culture of resistance against that. Um. So I'm on. All right, I'm on. I'm on live right now. Uh, I got people who's telling me right here. He's telling me that it's evolving for the new age. Hmm. But, but I don't see mean it. by that. I said growth for be- growth for better or worse. It's still growth. I don't know. I think he agree with. I think he probably agree with Anthony. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know if if evolving and growth is the right word. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know I feel like we got, but we got, we got, we got, <laughs> uh, we got people. We got people like Twenty One Savage and and, and uh, me goes out right now. You got people who are underground like Chewy and Actual Proof and Rhapsody doing it's the same type of experimentation with the music, but they're doing I, it for the right reasons. I understand all that, but I feel like it's kind of I feel like it's kind of stagnant too because like mm-hmm. we still. Like I asked you before, like what we moving on to? Like Ms. Mitchell yeah. brought it up plenty of times. Like what are we moving on to? Like as you, if you look at like the history, yeah. I watched a couple. I watched a couple documentaries where it's like they talk about jazz and people moved on from jazz to this because you know jazz started getting watered down or whatever and turned like, to something they didn't like. And then, and, and the same thing with funk. And the same thing with funk. And like now we had hip hop and it's like. So what are we, we doing? What's happening with it? I, yeah, I what, like that what are we doing? That depends. That depends on the artist that's out now that we're gonna have around in five to ten years. So I've had this convo with other people like my age who you know who love jazz, who love funk, who love hip hop, and that is the question of the right century. Like that's what depends. like. But but I but feel they, like feel like, strong, they feel like they feel like there's like, not going to be another great innovation. They feel like that shit coming. is that that no. They feel like but, like that that shit is over. It's coming. It's coming. We're done. Yeah, but if it's if it's, it's, if it's coming, time if it's to coming, here. if it's coming, do you feel like we still going? What, what are we going to call it? Are we still going to call it hip hop? It's branch of huh? Because it's going to be a branch of hip hop because it's coming from a urban contemporary. Well, that and hip hop has surpassed everything in popularity at this point. So, so hip hop, like the world's microscope, is on the urban culture right now. So you saying you see like you see like a resurgence and like you know just like um uh an organic musical aspect like where we seeing like more actual live instruments being used and not like this copy paste mm-hmm. type of energy. I feel like even though the mainstream focus seems to be on the Twenty One Savages and 
the Migos and people like that. That right. the main focus is still on people like Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole and even people like Saha the Prince, the up and comers that are following in that same vein of what the original culture stood for. And those people are at the same time experimenting. So what we gonna get in the next five to ten years is gonna hinder on Kendrick Lamar at the forefront, J. Cole not far behind. The big okay. Sean's and the big crits and oh whatever he's far behind. He's that folding clothes and pouring almond milk to people. Yeah, like that's what the next wave is gonna be. But all right, see, and this is all right. So this is what I'm saying too, right? <laughs> because I just got done saying earlier how I feel like the the music that J Cole and Kendrick um did, like their recent projects, like mm-hmm. it's. It's showing that they not they they feeling some kind of way about not having that energy reciprocated. You know what I'm saying? So well, they, what's that? What, what's that saying about what's that saying black, about where their music is going to go? Well, I feel like it, it is. I feel like it is it is reciprocated because you see that in the way the kids are living now, the way the kids are are doing their thing. Like when when I heard Lil Uzi say on the radio, I only eat chicken nuggets and chicken strips and and um what you call it uh pigs in a blanket and shit like that like that's right. everything that my little brother he's a fucking third eat. grader basically that's everything he eats <laughs> that's what he eats like, he eats mashed potatoes and easy mac and chicken nuggets and shit like that like yeah. The music is reflecting the way the people are living because the people that are living in these times are the people that are making the music. And that, that that's their palette, and their palette is non-existent, unfortunately. For some people, you have other people, you have some people who are living in that chicken nugget and mashed potatoes and eating mac life, but they have and that connection to the road. And they have that connection to the culture as it was originally presented. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I love a good tostino roll. Like, like. I love tostino rolls. <laughs> that's my fucking shot. But, but that's not. But I'm not confused about whether or not that is proper to serve every day. And if you present me with a filet mignon. That Tostito roll is going against the wall. Because I want still, I want the filet even considering that, Even considering that, if you look at the climate now, we have so much doodle to choose from. But at the forefront, our top tier is, which is universally agreed upon, is J. Cole, Ken Lamar, and Big Sean. Yeah. All spitters. All spitters. Heavily true, rooted I, in the but, culture. But I feel like how Aaron would feel, like like that's Rushmore territory. Rushmore is always gonna be you know somebody's got an indication that it's not dead. Rushmore. Isn't that an indication that it's not dead? I guess. I don't leaving know. the leadership. We're leaving the leadership. All that means all that means all that all that all that means, all that, the all that means to me. All spitters. They all spitters who are rooted in the original culture. Lil well, Wayne is not the best rapper alive right now. It's fucking Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Um, that, 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 there's at least that. I will, I, I will applaud that right there. Cause that, that time. And I enjoy Lil Wayne, but I just I know that he isn't the greatest lyricist of all time, and I don't look to him to to give me like lyrical fire. I just I, but like, you know, I know. Like you said, like but you just me, said the greatest lyricist of all time. Like you ain't even gonna break it down because Kendrick is a lyricist, and he's a rapper, and he's a pop entertainer, and he's all of those things at once. True. But um, so let's let's um shout out um for um. Recess, real, real quick. The producer of all right, right? <laughs> <laughs> like I did that. <laughs> a vampire, Aaron? the vampire from Brooklyn. Aaron? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's not gonna call him a vampire from Brooklyn because he'll never age. <laughs> he'll never age. Uh, <laughs> only when he had he that just, mustache. <laughs> he just hot. He hot and facial hair. That's all. Right. Whether he's in trucker hats or weird hats yeah. that make him look like a twisted 
Dudley do right. Only you can that, prevent the Dudley do right. <laughs> 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 Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Star Trek, um, Pharrell Williams. For real, for real. I'm convinced Pharrell is Doctor Who in real life. Oh man, yo, that kid be the fucking. Now we got a Star Trek. A Star Trek yeah. uh, artist. <laughs> I, like, I would love him to fucking have a top, like a big ass blue phone booth to just appear right in my fucking backyard. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now the Pharrell reason, the reason, the reason I picked Pharrell um, for recess today is because um, uh, he like he like uh, people that know me know that Pharrell is like top inspiration for me. Like as far as like being into music the way that i am like i i grew up i grew up listening to music but you know like as far as like being into it and actually like you know um like you know trying to come up with my own sounds and stuff like that like pharrell was integral to that for me because when um we were coming up anthony remember like you know people like timberland pharrell you know they they ran they ran the radio you know what i'm saying and um yeah like I remember, like, it was artists that I never would even listen to. Like, I, Ms. Mitchell know how I feel about Noriega, like, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, when I heard, when I heard, like, those Pharrell, tra- those Neptune's tracks, it was just like, man, like, that's 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 a sound, you know what I'm saying? That that I was just mm-hmm. into, you know what I'm saying? I was into that sound, and Pharrell's sound, what I'm saying is that it's different than, like, you know, what would be more integral to hip hop. Like when like when Premier and, and Pete Rock and them when they came into the game, like it wasn't it wasn't that far off. Like you knew it was still like, you know, closer to traditional hip hop, you know? Right, um, right. But but with Pharrell, it seemed like, you know, he was one of those producers that was trying to take the sound in a different direction. You know what I'm saying? More so like pulling us out of this this um I want to be hip hop forever type of thing. You know what I'm saying? He was pulling us out and um and and um trying but to breathe. But ironically, a new... still still saying almost 100 percent true to the origin. Man, right, right. Lap dance, lap dance is that work, and that's like it's <laughs> like rock and roll. It's like a motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And um, and and uh, like if you, you know what I'm saying? Like listen to Pharrell. Like you, you can tell like he's a he's an actual musician. There's not just some beat maker we talking about. Yeah. Um, so Pharrell was I, in the marching band at his high school. Right. <laughs> I didn't right. know that. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, like real rap though. Him like, and like Chad. Him and Chad both were. Yeah. Real rap though, cause like Pharrell is the reason like I I beg my parents for a keyboard just because of listening to the Neptune shit all the time. Like mm-hmm. I, I want to figure out I, I want to figure out how to you know what I'm saying do do that type of shit. This is even before like the whole rap thing. I never you know what I'm saying even was like really thinking about rap at the time. It was just like you know I, I I'm trying to figure out like how he get those sounds like you know what he's doing with it and all this you know mm-hmm. and um. Uh, of course, like, you know, as you, like, you know, grow up and listen to more music and you backtrack and all that type of stuff, you get into other artists, but, like, Pharrell was always integral to that to me, and I feel like if we would have followed, if a lot of us from that era would have followed that example, we probably wouldn't even be talking about, you know what I'm saying, hip-hop right now. We'd probably be doing something else with the sounds, you know what I'm saying, because it's not even just him. Like, I hear, I hear like, you know, these elevating influences in stuff that Andre 3000 does, where he was trying to get away from that whole you know what I'm saying, like, let's be hip hop yeah. forever, like, it's like, we need to move on to something else, and that's why, you know yeah, that's yeah. basically what I'm getting mm-hmm. but, um I would like to just add that, that the people who are probably going to be able to do that are, are going to have to be like Kendrick, or like Pharrell, or like um, 3K, where they have the sensibilities in the in, in the traditions ingrained in them from from the origins, and they're able to take that and then apply it and then transcend it. Like you're, mm. it's it's probably not going to happen with people from this generation that don't have their hands in the roots. 
And I don't mean yeah, exactly. the roots like 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 the band that Questlove plays drums for. I mean the roots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me give out Although homework real quick. Place. Hold on, let me give out homework real quick because we don't have that much time left for the show. Um, because I knew this was gonna be a topic that we could just talk about forever because we got a lot to say about this shit. But um, so next week we're gonna finish up our um born to you mic um the other half i know it took a long time but we had to give ourselves time to read that long ass book michael eric dyson michael eric dyson i actually met him and tried to convince him to go on the show with us next week and he won't respond michael eric dyson i read a lot of i write uh uh i write a lot of words I write a lot of ass books. He might I be write a lot of ass. Months I write a lot of ass books. If he don't answer our tweets and our and, and and my text, man. So if you have not finished "Born to Use Mics" and all this time, you are whack because we gave you more than enough time yeah. <laughs> between the last show and now to read that long ass. I wish that was an audible book, yo. There's no. There unfortunately is no I audible wish. for I "Born wish. to Use Mics." <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Please don't bring R. Kelly into this now. Oh man! I wish, I wish, I wish. Isn't it amazing how like uh, uh, Illmatic, Illmatic has like so many conversations in different media to like you know talk about it in there. Like it's like like you we got the whole you got the Thomas Illmatic documentary. You got the book written by Michael Eric Dyson. That documentary like, is. Like, yeah, yeah, it was. It was really dope. It's like all this I stuff. Think it's dude, amazing. Around. I think it's amazing that we made it through this whole episode and only mentioned Puffy twice. Back at the end of the at the fucking end of the nineties, beginning of the two thousands, that's who everybody blamed the death of hip hop on. Who brother love? Brother love. Brother love. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck the fuck you was watching the nutty professor. <laughs> <laughs> he's watching oh, he's the old like, UPN. He's watching the old UPN episode. Mother love, brother love. But then he said it was a joke. Like he said, oh no, it was just a joke. It was going to be. That's one of those jokes. Put out a public statement and everything. Exactly. Well, he's, he's, he's like, he's, no longer be known as. <laughs> his eyes are dilated though. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, for the love. And you know he got he got like a stash of Ciroc just off in the closet somewhere. Was that, that, the was that for his birthday? Away. Was that and for his birthday? It might have been. He he oh, thought he, he was like the Ciroc closet whenever he wants. And I'm he sure he there's a closet in his house <laughs> or wherever he be at that has a gold plate on that says Ciroc closet, and he just opens the closet and just grabs a bottle and just swigs it. Did he was light skin for a day? <laughs> oh, jeez. Call me brother. Love. <laughs> <laughs> he was light skin for a day. That's that was. Yo, man, it nothing better in this world than making jokes at Puffy's expense. <laughs> <laughs> brother love. Yo, I can't. If you ever meet him in person, he's gonna fuck us up. He, no, why not? He gonna fuck me up. He's gonna walk to Brooklyn and get my ass That's what he's gonna do. He's gonna, he gonna send us. Oh, shit. I ain't going to no fucking Brooklyn to get him a cheesecake. Get your own damn cheesecake. You ain't gonna never get that. You ain't gonna never get that fucking cheesecake. Shut up. I'm gonna run across the box. street to Russell. Be like, Russell, protect us. I'm gonna eat that joint on the way back. The mighty, mighty, the mighty, mighty. Guard us, cause we gonna tell them how much we love Def Jam and all the people that would ever grace the um, the grace the um, <laughs> grace his um, his on uh, his Def Jam hall. So he gonna be like, nope. Ha. Everyone who ever breached the threshold. Hell yeah, include Nikki D, cause Nikki D was that <laughs> fucking work. <laughs> Nikki D sitting at home somewhere like hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I forgot you. I forgot you. <laughs> you know what? That, that fucking burns me too. Cause every time you see people mention female rappers, 
Like even Yo Yo gets mentioned before people be like, oh yeah, Nikki D. Everybody thinks Foxy Brown was the first female rapper to ever sign a Dutch Jam. Like every, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Nikki D, oh, what's wow. that word? Ooh, ladies first, ladies first. <laughs> word. Wait till we get to the, to the to the ladies first episode. Oh, um, ladies first. But what do you guys think? And I hate to ask this question. Do y'all think that Nicki Minaj, speaking of women rappers, do y'all think Nicki is gonna suffer now? I think if she keep tweeting out like she do, like remember I did this, remember I did that. I think she is just gonna hurt her reputation and her image. I thought she shut her comment section down like after the verdict came out so about her brother. Her brother is like she defended him after that. She's not defending him now, is she? So she better stop she, that. She defended him after that. Yo, dude got convicted of savagely yeah. raping an eleven year old girl. You got to stop that shit now. Yep. yep. That's so kinda that's Hollywood selling witch trial. It's going down. I mean, but he got convicted. Going down. It's about to go on for like, a minute. He, he, yo. I mean, I'm not going to argue with that verdict. Like, they they, they proved it. So. Like, what's the reason? What's the reason y'all think this is for happening all of a sudden? When is it going to Harvey Weinstein started some shit. I think that, I think, I definitely think that some of the higher up are, like, I think it's like this. I think they're okay with some of them getting flushed out because they want them gone. But then mm-hmm. it's just like, it's like, it's like anything else. Once you start that shit, you can't. Stop it. It's like an avalanche. It's like you think you're going to be able to... And you have, no, you, you have no idea how big it's going to grow either. No. Nope. And you don't know if the folks that you don't want out of there are going to get out of it. Like, like, social media is a motherfucker, right? You know, these days. So, like Social media is a fucking devil. <laughs> you can't, like, you can't stop it now. As soon as that shit goes viral, it. motherfuckers that you it. didn't want to get out because those were your friends and you were still protecting them, they going to get caught up. Out. Cause I mean, everybody, everybody, everybody is is out. Like every time, I think, like, I think I, K, I just, everybody is out. Yeah, I just think the truth is coming out differently because um we all got an outlet. Like everybody well, see, is just like the you know come out and is, say something. The problem with that is the truth comes out before it's fact checked. But that's how these investigations and all this this backtracking starts. You know, you know, like um. Like uh, some just a lighter example. Like uh, when they was um having that whole that whole uh discussion about uh Grammy so white or whatever. It, and yeah. then um, oh, um wait a minute. I, pause, I, pause for a second. See, Aaron gets pissed when I don't end the show. He be getting uh, all <laughs> oh no, nah, I mean he get all nah, we, with me so. So I gotta no, end the show <laughs> before we before we finish. So this kind of ties um, into it though. This kind of ties into the topic. I know, but I still only got like less than ninety seconds, so I can so I still gotta drop my it by my outro. So let's, this was an amazing it. show, and and unfortunately, school is officially out. Join us next time. I guess we have attention after this. We have attention. <laughs> Yeah, and you always got detention. Hi, it's Jamie, progressive number one, number two employee. Leave a message at the... Hey, Jamie, it's me, Jamie. This is your daily pep talk. I know it's been rough going ever since people found out about your acapella group, Mad Harmony, but you will bounce back. I mean, you're the guy always helping people find coverage options with the Name Your Price tool. It should be you giving me the pep talk. Now get out there, hit that high note, and take Mad Harmony all the way to nationals this year! Sorry, this is pitchy. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. You bring your phone everywhere. Work, school, the movies. Now you can bring it to an Xfinity store for an easy way to switch to Xfinity Mobile, a new kind of network designed to save you money. You can get up to five lines of talk and text included with Xfinity Internet at no extra cost, so all you pay for is data. 
it's never been easier to switch to Xfinity Mobile and keep the phone you love. Click here to see how. Sorry, I gotta take this. Restrictions apply. Limited to select mobile phones. Requires activation of a new line of Xfinity Mobile. Up to five devices per account. New Xfinity Internet customers limited to up to two lines pending activation of Internet service.